what better way to come back to a Bible study than coming back to a Bible study? And we're going to pick up where we are. It's been a while. Uh, I've been out sick. And just in case I am on oxygen, so I'm, I don't know if I need it. I'm going to try without it. So we're picking our, our study back up with the church fathers, and I don't mean the Catholic fathers. And I know the Bible says, Call no man your father. But church fathers have picked up and stayed. And now we're going to look at Justin Martyr. And Justin was a name that was attached. I mean, excuse me, Martyr was a name that was attached to Justin. He wrote 148 A.D. And could be as far as 166 A.D. He wrote in a capacity after the capacity of a Bible commentary. And you know what a Bible commentary is. It's, it's writings of the Bible, about the Bible, purely of the Bible. He put much effort in the writings of the Apostles. So we're looking at a New Testament. His proper demur of the people that knew him. He quotes from John 1. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. His essay. Now get this. Jesus Christ is God. Based upon the word passage of John 1. So he's not a Jehovah Witness. He is a man that says that Jesus is God and God is Jesus based upon the fact of the gospel of John chapter 1. So guess what? Another thing. He had to have John 1 in order to quote and write and study and believe John chapter 1. In the midst of the silent centuries we talked about before, they were not so silent that the scholars would have you to believe. So in the period of time of the silent centuries, Justin Mahler is saying, Jesus is God, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. And the scholars, no, 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 no. Now, it's interesting during Justin Mahler's time that Christians should gather on the first day of the week. Well, that gets, that gets rid of your seven-day Adventists. They met together for assembly of and for the New Testament scriptures. So we didn't have them. Thought they weren't reliable. I thought it was the silent century. It's interesting. Christians are gathering with new, the New Testament. They would attend to a sermon by a bishop. That's a Bible ter terminology. Pastor is really not a, a Bible terminology. I know Catholic Church has bishops and all that, but the Catholic Church is, is wrong. The Bible's correct. Why did, does the Bible Church today float away from the Bible in terminology? The congregation would bond in prayers. They would take an offering while giving thanks to God. <laughs> How many people when the offering church wants money, church wants his money, money, money. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. 
Praise be the Lord for all the blessings. Glory to God, I can give something. They celebrated the Holy Communion in remembrance of the Savior. As what the scripture... So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Paul gives us... Excuse me for drinking. Paul gives us the rules. And Jesus gives us the rules of the Communion. And that it is the remembrance of Jesus Christ and his work and his finished work upon Calvary and that he's coming back again. It is written by Jesus in the New Testament and it's written by Paul in the New Testament and they are following. I guess they had to have the scriptures. I guess it was available during the silent centuries. Because they are obeying the scriptures in the Holy Communion. They are obeying the scriptures in giving thanks. They are obeying the scriptures of giving. They are obeying the scriptures in prayer. They are obeying the scriptures by having a bishop giving them a sermon. The New Testament scriptures. They had to have it. They had to, to know because they're following the New Testament should be the opening part of the service. That's the sign of the century. What they did, they opened up their service with the New Testament. A reading, of, <clears throat> maybe they had somebody uh, or to read a passage in the Old Testament. They read from the New Testament that scholars say, well, we don't have. Kind of hard. He makes by name the mention of the book of Revelation. He quotes Matthew, Luke, John, 1 John, and half of the Pauline epistles. I thought you didn't have them. They're there. He was a traveling preacher. It says Justin says were Justin says were read every Sunday in the church at Rome. The scripture. <laughs> they ain't, they ain't the Catholic Church in Rome. The memoirs, the memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are being read as long as it is allow allowable. What do you mean by allowable? Because here they'll be coming a, a, a congregation called the Catholics. And they're going to try to put a lock on the Bible. They're going to try to burn the Bible. They're going to try to destroy the Bible. They're going to kill people over the Bible. And you believe the Bible. If you have the Bible, you read the Bible, you preach the Bible, you're going to be put on, on a stake to be burned. You're going to be killed. You're going to be a martyr. Single passage where Justin uses both terms makes it clear that memoirs of the apostles or the gospels are equivalent and use the plural indications of Justin's awareness of more than one written gospel. Hundred and thirty eight AD, they read and studied the writing, the ready, the written, not the oral traditions. The writings, the what was written, what was passed on, not oral. What do you hear? Do you hear? What do you hear? What do you hear? What do you hear? No, it was written in print. We discussed that. The silent years of seminary and scholarship were actually not so silent by the early church fathers and the men of faith. So if you got a church, if you got a seminary, you got a scholar, well, there, there were silent years of the Bible. You tell them, 
Go take a swan dive in, in the lake of fire. Or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Tectarium. Tectarium. After Justin Martyr's death. His writings are 190 to 211 A.D. The Canon. The New Testament collection of books. His is the Gospel of Luke. Ten Pauline epistles. Again, this is in the silent century. Tertullian is writing. Tertullian is a authorizing. Tertullian is certifying the Word of God. Clement of Alexandria. We have of him the Peter, first and second, James, John, and Paul. Boy, John's showing up a lot. John in his Gospels, John is in Epistles, John in the book of Revelation. Along with Paul and along with Peter and, and James, we have the authorization of the Holy Spirit by written of the church fathers. <clears throat> the word of God is assured and more sure of the King James Bible. He quotes from the complete Bible, Old Testament, and New Testament. Including Ruth in the Song of Solomon. He covers all the Old Testament books. So, is there such thing as Isaiah? Is there such thing as Lamentations? Is there such thing as Naaman? Is there such thing as Peter? Yes. Yes. All these men. And all the fragments have been written and found and discovered and yes. Forget the Dead Sea Scrolls. They're dead. These men weren't dead. And they're not dead today. They're absent from the body present with the Lord. He got including James and Philemon. In 2 Peter, he covers all the New Testament books. In 211 AD, this is surely before 400 AD, it is denied, denied, rejected by seminaries of Bible colleges today. Imagine going to a Bible seminary, a Bible college, a place to learn the Bible, and they say, no, that's not correct. No, the Bible's wrong. No, it's not the King James Bible. Oh, man, lake of fire blowing on those seminaries. Teaching of the, of the sulfur of their mouths, of the rejection of the Word of God. Origin, 219 A.D., Commentary of John 32 volume. There's John again. There he is. John was the last apostle to die. He was the beloved apostle. And how his name shows up over and over and over and over of what he wrote. He has commentaries on 27 New Testament books. Whoa, that's interesting. What? That's all we don't have. Them. How can you write on something that you don't have? It'd be like me if I wrote an essay or if I wrote a report on Romeo and Juliet. I never read Romeo and Juliet. I never looked at Romeo and Juliet. How can Origen write commentaries on books of the New Testament if he didn't have it, the scholars say? He couldn't really write commentaries if it was oral. You know, I belong to a good church. I have a good pastor. 
And if I were to take the oral message that he delivers to us Wednesday nights and Sunday. I don't remember what he said last Sunday. Now, I could give you the fundamental. I can give you the outline, he said. And I, I could look at my notes that I took about what he said. But to purely say what my pastor said Sunday in oral tradition, and if I were to write an essay, a commentary on what he said Sunday, I would be in great error. Because I wouldn't be able to remember it. <clears throat> and if I called up someone from church and said, hey, what did you hear in the message? Hey, what did you hear in the message? And call somebody else and call everybody from the church that was there Sunday morning and say, what did you hear even still, it would be much different than truly what was said. And I'm talking about or where we did not look at our notes. We did not read the pastor's outline, which he, I believe if you contact him, he, he, can, he will email you. That's oral. But a man that writes commentaries on books of the Bible based upon he has the written word of God. And from those writings and from those commentaries and those reports and those essays and those preaching and those writing to their friends and those writing to churches, those that deliver to us what the apostles said comes to be in our King James Bible. Which scholars say, nope. I don't listen to scholars. I listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't speak to scholars. The scholars say that there is no books but oral tradition unto 400 AD. Remember the silent century? Well, Origen was 184 to 253. Scholars say after 400 is when we... But from 184 to 253, 219 AD, in what the scholars say is the silent century, they say, no, 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 no. It's all oral. Well... These men wrote commentaries. That's written. I'm writing commentaries on Genesis and Jeremiah. That's written. The church fathers disproved the scholars in seminaries. 